My, my presentation is about the importance of video game localization. Actually, I will try to give some examples at the end related to education, but my main goal is you as a developer of, of games uh, for education to have in mind the importance of localizing these games to bring it to the market afterwards. Okay, here's the structure of the, of the presentation itself. I will give a brief introduction. I will put head-to-head -head translation and localization that many people mixed. A brief history of game localization. I will try to make it a little bit fun. Some question, questions that we need to answer as developers before bringing our game to, localize, to localization or to be localized. Common mistakes we make as developers. And if you allow me a little bit spam about my company at the end. Okay, localization is gaining importance day by day in game industry wh while it tries to make it to the top of the entertainment sector. Actually, localization is, that is it, be it started from poor translation, what Google Translate does, to a more sophisticated art nowadays. Translation is, is the process of converting lines of, lines of text from one language to another. This we all know. But the goal is to make sure that this translation or this translated text is as accurate and seamless as possible. So something will always be lost in translation, we all know. There are plenty of words that in foreign languages we don't have a complete translation or counterpart here. In, for example, in Spain we use nowadays, our young people we use many English words, words because they actually don't have a counterpart here. But most of the part, translators try to match it, the original text, as much as possible. In our business, a good translation is the foundation of a solid localization. Okay, but actually, what's the difference between translation and localization? Translation is more academic. The, the one of you that come from the university will know that translation tries to be super accurate when you convert a text, when you want to say the same thing in any single language. Localization is more business oriented or business focused. The purpose of localization is bring a product to a new market. You want to sell this product in a new market. Every market is different, which is why localization is so important. You, not, you, don't, want, you don't want only to translate it. Localization take, takes the translated text, the accurate translated text, and make sure that it fits into the culture and country it's being sold. I have some examples, but one of them, I, I don't know if you, if you have played, if your games, you have played Fallout 3, but Fallout 3, in all over the world, it has references to nuclear war and so on, but in Japan it doesn't, because there, the cultural reference, avoid to, to speak <coughs> about these nuclear weapons. This can include dialogues, story changes, post acting, and character design. For example, a clear example is jokes. You don't make jokes here in Spain as you make it in Germany or make it in the United States. You won't understand jokes made in the United States with cultural reference over there, here. To sum up, localization is the process of tailoring a product to be sold in a specific market. Translation is changing words from one language, language to another. A good translation is the foundation of a, of a localization project. Nowadays, it's a little bit caught here in the, in the screen. Nowadays, <coughs> there is a new term we are speaking here in, in, in the localization companies. It's known as tran transcreation. It's a step ahead of localization. It's when the translator gets inside the creative process and it makes his own adaptation adaptation or its own changes to the, to the jokes, to these cultural references. This is a step ahead and it's more and more demanding. This is the brief history of game localization. I wanted to show you how it changed through all the years. Actually it started with video games in the 1970s. We had the arcades where we went, well I was not born, but the people there went to play in arcades. They, sorry. Hopefully it won't go away again. Okay, we, we, they went into arcade. Games didn't have too much text. They had 
play button, you lose, you win, and not much more. One of the first games that was localized was Pac-Man. With the, with the rise of the console systems like Atari made in the US, but the games made in Japan, they wanted to sell in the US. So they translated these Pac-Man games and these arcade games to bring it to a new market that was the United States market. In the 80s, we came to the spread of the console system. We got the NES, the Game Boy, Sega Mega Drive, or Sega Genesis, even the name was translated. And the first game that started localization or translation, as we all know, it was Mario Bros. It was translated from Japanese into English, but all the boxes, all the user manual was translated in every single language they sell, for example, Spanish, French, German. That's first, it was the first one. And in the 80s, we have got the first big mistake of translation or localization. Maybe you played Zero Wing. It's very famous for this flop. The, when you started the game, it has this sentence, cats, all your base have belonged to us. None of the players understood a word of the sentence. They press continue and then start to play. But they even didn't know that there was the enemy of the game. Then we come to, to the 90s where the partial, partial localization became the norm. What's partial localization? What Mario Bros. did. The game was in English, translated to from whatever language this modern language was to English, but the box use manual, the marketing was translated into the language of the country they wanted to sell. Audio was very, very rare to translate. Only a few games had audio translation except for English. And as uh, an example, Baldur's Gate was the first RPG completely translated to Spanish. Completely was all the in-game text, not only the commercial. Then we come to the 20s. Well, we got the almost a PC at every home, and we got the spread of these massive online multiplayer games with World of Warcraft. What did World of Warcraft or any <coughs> multiplayer game, massive multiplayer game, they wanted to get to many, as many players as they could, they won. Because it was a competition between people, but it, between countries also. You wanted to play against people of other countries, but you wanted to understand every single command you were, you, you were using. So companies translated what it's called sim ship. Sim ship is you are uh, shipping a game, all over the world, they want translated and localized. So every single player where you are selling this game can play it without any misconfusion or any downside against any other player in another country. And then we come to 2010, what we are living today. Full localization has become the standard. Normally, when you sell, you want to sell a video game in another country, you localize it or you translate it at least. Actually, you have some requisites. For example, if you want to sell in the Apple App Store, you have to translate very little things like screenshot descriptions or metadata or keywords. But if you don't translate it, you can not sell there. We come to the transcreation when we get cultural references adapt to every single market. That's become very important with mobile games when you need to be very careful where are you selling these games and what are you telling and are you having respect for the norms of this Apple store, Steam store, whatever. And we are seeing like a potential future in the voice localization with VR. VR has no as much text as games before. They, they are normally guided by audio, do this, do that. This will be like the potential of localization in the future, like having voice up. Very quick, question that you need to, to ask yourself before localizing a game. The first one, should you even localize your game? Yes, it's the first question you need to ask yourself. Maybe you don't want to sell in another market, you only want to focus your game in one market or here as education to test it here in Spain, your educational game. But you need to know that normally 40 to 50% of the revenue comes from foreign markets, not from your own especially if you are not from Japan, you're not from the United States, or maybe Germany here in the UK, Germany. But if you are from Spain, this is normally the case. 
is your game ready to be localized? This is more technical stuff. We will discuss a little bit uh, further in the next slides. But you need to be sure that while you are programming the game, it can be localized afterwards. Don't make a mess with the code and it make it, it very difficult to, to translate it afterwards. What content needs to be localized? This is another thing. You need to know what's the minimum viable localization content you need. For example, as a record site or a standard for publishing your game in the different stores. Maybe you'd say, I don't want to localize anything or translate anything. Then you won't be able to sell your game in some platforms. The fourth is what, what is your localization budget? You need to, set to see if, you're, if you want to invest more money, your game will be more or better localized than if you spend less. Because you can do voice dubbing or not, you can localize it 100% or only 70%. If you play Telltale games, for example, the, la the last one was only localized 70%. That's better not to invest than localizing 70%. You couldn't even play the game because there were questions in English and all the answers in Spanish. You were a Spanish player, you, you didn't understand the question. It, it has, it's a nonsense to have the, the answers translated. Now it's localized 100%. What language should you localize to? When you make this question, everyone says, I want to localize it to English, if you're Spanish. But maybe English is not the language you <coughs> shouldn't be localized to. Maybe uh, in education, for example, maybe English or the English territories has another complete educational system that we have. So maybe you need to translate to systems that are more likely, like us, where you can aim your game better if it has some uh, success here. Maybe French, I really don't know which differences in the educational system are, but I know England or the United States have a completely different educational system than we do. Uh, for ending, this is more than advice than a question. Don't forget to marketing materials and other docs. More, mm, many of our clients tell us to translate the game. And we tell them, well, it's a mobile game. You don't have box. You usually don't have user manual. Usually 99.9% .9 of the time. But why don't you translate marketing materials like the one you're publishing will be using to spread the, the game all over the, the market like uh, in every single store, the, the screenshots, the description, whatever. They don't consider normally this being in the budget. This is linked to the common mistake big companies does, and normally indie developers, as they are less experienced, do also. The first one, thinking localizing is a, isn't a big deal. You need to think that more players is more revenue. And that true localization ta takes time and effort. Mistake two is related to the one I, I just, the question I just answered before, hard coding the text. You need to be aware if you are going to translate your game, at the moment of programming it, be aware of making it ready for being localized. If not, you are going backwards, you're investing more money in trying to make your game localized, finding all the sentences all over the game, it's a hell. Mistake three is not doing your research. That's related, well, you say, I will localize my game to English. But maybe your game will be well uh, sold in, in Japan. I have an example at the end. If we've got time, I will tell about. But maybe it's not translating into English. Maybe to Japanese is even better, and you even consider it. But Japan is demanding this type of game. <coughs> Sorry. Mistake four is forgetting about culturization. This is related, for example, as uh, Fallout 3. If you translate Fallout 3 with all these references to nuclear weapons, nuclear war, you will have problems in Japan. Or even Nazi themes in Germany. That's a little bit tricky also. Mistake four is not providing enough context to translators. Nowadays, if you, got, if you are going to translate a legal document, you will assure yourself that the legal translator you will hire knows about legal themes because you are investing so much money and maybe you are in trouble if it is translated in with full of mis mistakes or bad translation. 
in games is almost the same. You need to, to be sure that the people who is translating your game will be, it, it's gamer itself, knows the platform they are aiming, maybe it's an RPG player, it will translate better RPGs than action games, and you can demand it. You can ask for translators that are specified or specialized 